Arizona is a great jurisdiction. Here's a story that everyone needs to know about in terms of mining. Ken Berry, CEO of Northern Vertex, joins us today. Ticker NEE.V on the TSX. Ken, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to speak with you. David, thank, uh, thank you for having me on and very pleased to be here to tell your listeners a little bit about Northern Vertex and the Moss Mine. I'm very excited to speak with you because your stock is up more than 100% year to date. I know the sector's done well, but this is exceptional. You've beat both the GDX and the GDXJ. How did you do it? Well, we're a company that's gone right from exploration through construction, uh, commissioning, and into production. I think this is uh, probably one of the most challenging aspects of mining is going into production. Uh, we had our, our, our challenges along the way. Uh, we hit some speed bumps, uh, but our recent quarters, uh, the last second and third quarter, have continued to increase production quarter over quarter. So I think that's recognized in the market, as well as the exploration program, which is now underway. And we believe this is the next value added proposition to really lift the cap off of Northern Vertex and demonstrate that this mine can be much more than just a, a small mine. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to our upcoming uh, exploration program and resource calculation. Were these speed bumps related to COVID at all? I know the entire industry has been hit. How has it affected you this year? No, we, we were had a, a very early scare with the COVID. Uh, uh, we had individuals that uh, had visited our site uh, and come down with the virus. We quickly implemented a number of programs, and I think we got ahead of the curve, probably out in front of most mining companies. So we have not experienced any shutdowns or any cases on our site, knock on wood, uh, we've been very successful at splitting up our groups and maintaining production. That's it. That's actually reflected in your stock price because I'm looking at the charts right now. Your stock didn't go down in March. Everything else did, but it stayed flat. It didn't go down at all. No, we were we were definitely uh, in and around March. Uh, you could see that production was turning. Uh, this had been something that was underway for the last 18 months since we brought in uh, a complete new team of, of miners and an operational team. And, and this team has really gelled. Uh, they're excelling right now. We're seeing that with our monthly and quarterly production. Our numbers at the end of September uh, were our best yet. We had just under 15,000 ounces of gold and silver production. That was 13,000 ounces of pure gold production. We had over 27 million in revenue. So our team is just performing. We're hitting our stride. And in addition to that, as I mentioned, the real value added proposition now is the exploration program, which is underway. And that's expected to grow our global resource, which sits just under half a million ounces of gold and 5.8 million ounces of silver. So we're optimistic about our next resource calculation. How does the 15,000 ounces compare to last year's production? That's uh, substantially higher. Um, certainly we had our startup issues in the first 18 months of commissioning, and this isn't unusual for, for most mining companies that go into production, uh, but it's especially difficult when you have a single asset company. And uh, we, we were no different than any other startup companies that are going through that production and commissioning phase. Uh, but I can say that we came through that, uh, unlike others that uh, didn't make it, and uh, we came through it and we performed exceptionally well, especially over the last three quarters. Right. So what, what risks are you looking out for right now? We've already gone past the shutdowns. Mines around the world have already reopened. What other operational risks are on the horizon, if any? Well, I think you're always uh, concerned about the COVID, of course. And this is something that we tackle on a daily basis. We're testing, taking temperatures, splitting up our teams. Uh, so. Again, we've been uh, uh, very proactive on that front. So that, that's one of the immediate uh, risks that you make sure that you prepare for. Uh, and uh, just our, our daily production, weekly production, monthly and quarterly production. Uh, we are definitely focused. Our mining team, operational team, I believe is one of the best compiled. And uh, for a junior producer, uh, we're certainly performing. Uh, now the next stage of development is that expiration as discussed. Yeah, I think the investors may be wondering, I'm looking at the stock chart, again, 100%, more than 100% year to date. Is it too late to get into your stock right now? Can you convince the investors that there's still value, there's still growth to be had? Where is this growth coming from, Ken? Well, we're sitting in around 160 to 170 million market cap. So 
you know, we, we don't believe uh, that we're overvalued by any means. In fact, we believe that the expiration upside on this property is substantial. And the drilling that's underway and has been active since about May and will continue through to November is certainly uh, demonstrating that. We're getting extremely uh, good positive hits. We've uh, stepped out over two kilometers from the Moss Mine open pit and we're hitting ore grade material. Uh, we're drilling an area called the Ruthane, which runs parallel to our open pit and it's just 160 meters to the southern edge. And we're getting results such as 15 meters of nine grams gold and over uh, uh, 716 grams of, of silver uh, within some of these hits on the roof vein. Uh, so we're very optimistic that this is going to add to our resource growth and is actually going to demonstrate uh, substantial upside from where we are today. But I would always uh, encourage any of your readers and, and listeners to uh, talk with their investment advisors, certainly not giving out investment advice. Moss Gold Mine is an open pit mine. Tell us what that means for the investors who may not be familiar with that term. How is it different just operationally and from a cost perspective from another mine? Well, open pit mining is one of the most straightforward uh, earth moving exercises, uh, one of the lowest cost uh, types of mining. And um, so ours is no different. We're an open pit operation, we mine, uh, approximately uh, 7,500 tons of ore per day, about 20,000 tons of waste. Uh, we put it into our crushers onto the leach pad. Uh, we then apply the solution. It goes into a Merrill Crow facility where we recover the gold and silver in solution and pour Doré bars on a weekly basis and ship it off to the refinery in Salt Lake City. That's Asahi. Uh, so it is a very straightforward operation. We're selling our gold and silver on a weekly basis. Uh, and with the prices where they currently sit, uh, this has been very profitable for Northern Veritex and the Moss Mine. This is something that I've wondered myself, actually, is why miners typically don't buy out a refinery or just refine their own ores. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that save you on costs for being vertically integrated? Or am I completely off here? Well, I think the refining business is a completely different business, and it's a it's definitely a a, a high capital intensive business. Uh, what we do is we actually uh, uh, pour Doré bars on a daily basis and and ship it off on a weekly basis. And this Doré is a mix of silver and gold. So the Moss Mine is made up of approximately ten ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. The value is in the gold. Uh, but we, we definitely have a silver component to that. And, and that explains why we have a silver stream with Mavericks Metals uh, as, our, as, a, as one of our key cornerstone investors. And uh, they have certainly given us the support and they see the Moss Mine as being a generational asset. Uh, and this is something that we were very pleased to solidify that relationship with Mavericks Metals. We also had Nomad who, who also bought uh, into one of our NSRs on the property. So over the years, there's been a lot of support from groups such as Macquarie, Sprott. Uh, now we have Mavericks, Greenstone, and, uh, and definitely Nomad. So lots of support, lots of recognition that the Moss Mine uh, has a, a lot of upside and, and expiration potential. The, the uh, situation with the prices this year with gold going up to $2,000 has no doubt strengthened your balance sheet. Exactly what lines have been improved. Can you walk us through it? Well, we had at the end of June, we had cash of approximately 6.8 million. And then at the end of September, uh, we had cash of over 12 million. So we're definitely generating a significant amount of free cash flow. And, and we're utilizing this free cash flow to pay down our debt and clean up our balance sheet. And we're also making some long term uh, investments. And these are transformational investments that will lead to lower costs in the future. And, and some of these investments include a power line, which we recently completed running to site. Uh, and that replaces eight generators, diesel burning generators. So we were extremely pleased with that. We had the support of the local communities in the state of Arizona. Uh, and then we're also looking at, uh, at increasing our crush size from a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. This will cut down our costs uh, in addition to allowing us to put more throughput into our crushers and onto the leach pad. And then we'll be expanding our leach pad in 2021 as well to accommodate the growth of the mine. Okay. 
now that you're seeing more free cash flow, how do you feel about dividends? Well, initially here, we'll be reinvesting in the mine and, and driving down costs. Uh, so dividends is something that uh, we look at in the future, but currently we're, we're reinvesting in our in the Moss Mine and the growth of the Moss Mine. Okay, so can you give us a five-year plan for the Moss Mine? Well, the Moss Mine, currently we're producing, we've increased quarter over quarter. Now what we're looking to do is increase the resource, and this is through the exploration drilling that's underway. When we were commissioning the project, uh, we were dealing with those operational startup issues. We didn't have a chance to explore the property as extensively as we would have liked to. That's changed now with the free cash flow. We're now exploring the property. We're looking at a resource update. And with that resource update comes a new block model, life of mine plan. And then what you start to do once you have that foundation is you start to look at de-bottlenecking and scaling up the operation. So that's something that will come through our mine planning uh, session, which will be in December and into the new year. Tell us about Arizona. I know that Nevada was ranked the top mining jurisdiction in the world at one point by the Fraser Institute, and Arizona is not too far away. What are the benefits of being in Arizona for a miner? Well, we're extremely happy with our location. We're in northwest Arizona. It, it has been very friendly to the northern Veritex and the Moss Mine. We employ over 150 men and women. Uh, and I know the Fraser Institute normally switches between Nevada and Arizona as the best mining jurisdiction in the world. And it's all dependent on copper and gold prices. Uh, but overall, nor Northwest Arizona has been very welcoming to Northern Veritex and the Moss Mine. And we've created a substantial economic benefit to the community. And, and I think this goes uh, uh, for all of our stakeholders, very pleased with the location. But even the best jurisdictions in the world still have risks associated. So what are the risks that investors should be looking out for? Obviously, the risks in Arizona aren't the same as in Peru or Russia or Congo. But in a very relatively safe jurisdiction, do you see any risks that investors should be watching out for? Well, I think investors always have to be concerned about the social license within the region that the mining company is operating. So this is something that we initiated in our early development dating back to 2011 and 2012. We've been active in the community. We've generated uh, science programs within the local high school schools as a feeder system into the universities within Arizona. Uh, we've also participated in the growth of uh, a heritage center in the, in the town of Bullhead City. We moved the head frame from our mining property uh, we were instrumental in moving the Little Red Schoolhouse to the town center within this heritage park. Uh, so earning your social license is an ongoing process uh, and integrating yourself with the community. Our 150 men and women live within the community of Bullhead City and the surrounding region of, of the Mojave District. So this is something that mining companies have to be very aware of and, and have to participate and, and uh, be respectful of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Generally, how do overhead costs in Arizona compare to uh, other jurisdictions across North America? Well, I think uh, Arizona can be compared to uh, Nevada. Um, it's very pro-mining. Um, costs would be no different than other areas uh, within that uh, Walker Lane trend that we're located. So we've, we've got uh, ready access to proven uh, uh, skilled labor and our costs would be uh, no different than the rest of the states. Finally, there's over or close to 2,000 tradable junior mining companies for investors to pick. You're in a great place, your stock's gone up a lot. What else makes you unique that stands out? Why Northern Vertex? Well, I think uh, uh, what's unique is Northern Vertex has raised over 100 million US to develop the Moss Mine. It's all been non-brokered financings. We have groups such as Greenstone, uh, who is backing us, Mavericks Metals, Nomad. Uh, we are really an unrecognized up and coming junior producer. And I think once, uh, once the story of Northern Veritex, the Moss Mine, and especially the value proposition of our exploration program, which is now underway, uh, becomes recognized within the marketplace, uh, I believe that you'll hear a lot more about Northern Veritex in the future. Ken, I appreciate you being on the show today. Great talk and uh, continued success with Northern Vertex. Thank you very much, David. And uh, thanks for having Northern Vertex and the Moss Mine on your program. And thank you for watching Kitco News. We'll have a lot more coverage for you. So stay tuned. <laughs>